If you're being sent maths home from your child's primary school and they really can't cope with it and you're not sure how to help, then you're in the right place. I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and during ordinary times I run training in primary schools for teachers that helps them teach all their children effectively so that those children are fluent, creative and confident with their maths. This first series of five videos for parents is for the parents of children who have never thrived with maths. They've never been able to do it. If your child was really good at maths when they were five or six years old, but then dropped off, you're gonna need my second series, which I hope to publish by the end of April, and there'll be a link to it there when it's been published, so you can go straight to it. In this first video, I'm going to teach you how to assess whether your child has physical barriers to learning that are really inhibiting their progress with maths, and if so, how to work around them. In the second video, I'm gonna explore the numbers to 10 and all the problems that your child might have with learning and understanding maths at that level. And again, we'll work on how to work around any problems you discover as you assess your child. In the third video in the series, I'll show you the secrets of teaching the numbers to 20 so that children will really understand them and have secure foundations for the future. In the fourth video, we're gonna look at the foundations of the numbers to 100. And in the fifth video, we'll explore how you go from having sorted out the key foundational problems with your child's maths to getting them really enjoying working independently with their maths and to being confident with working with the whole foundational maths curriculum. Right, let's get going with this first video on the physical and mental barriers to your child learning maths. Because we teach maths so young, it's often the case that children have no idea what's going on when they begin working on numbers in class. And they're always miles behind. When they finally get the grasp of the foundations of number, the class has moved on. So from the very beginning, they're learning to fake appearing to understand in their lesson. They're looking for superficial cues as to what the answer might be, easy ways of doing things that help them get around the fact that they don't properly understand. And they're usually watching their teacher's face for cues as to what that answer might be that they're looking for. Some children develop behavioral issues very young as a distraction from their fear of not being able to do the maths but most just end up super glued to a teaching assistant who will spoon feed them the answer and help them cope day by day in lessons. Now the chances are that your child has outgrown any physical barriers to learning maths that they did have. And it's just a case of going back to basics and rebuilding again properly. But first, let's just go through two checks, one for hearing and one for motor sensory coordination because these are really common barriers to children learning maths in primary school and they often go undiagnosed and lead to big problems later on. So first of all, let's talk about your child's hearing. Lots of young children have really complex problems with their hearing and they're complex because they're really variable. Some days your child can hear properly and some days they just can't due to all sorts of variable conditions. And such problems can be horrendous to diagnose because when you get them to a clinic and they go through tests, their hearing is fine on that day. But it's really common that children and adults who struggle with their maths had hearing problems when they were young. And that's why they missed foundational steps in their mathematics understanding. So while your child is at home, keep assessing their hearing. Can they properly hear you when they're not looking at your face? If you sense there are any issues, take the time to build up a picture of what's going on over time. Hearing problems will not be a barrier to you working with your child at home, but they will be a barrier when they go back to school and any work you can do in diagnosing them is really beneficial. Now let's talk about motor sensory integration, which is a much less widely understood issue for many children and quite a lot of adults. It's really common for children and some adults to struggle to fluently integrate the information that's coming into their brain from both their eyes and their ears 
and their sense of touch and their other senses. Their brain simply isn't wired up to integrate all that information efficiently. And that makes it much harder for them to take information in and to learn. Now, a lot of children struggle with these issues when they are four or five years old, and they will simply grow out of these problems. And it's yet another reason why experts recommend we start formal maths teaching at the age of seven, not at the age of four as we do in England, because you're setting up so many problems that we then have to work around. But here's a quick check for you to do to see if motor sensory integration problems are still a barrier to your child's learning. What you need to do is play snow angels with them. So snow angels are where you lie in the snow and move your arms and legs straight up and down together to make angel shapes in the snow. So the exercise is you start with your child lying on the ground, their eyes are shut, their arms are by their sides and their legs are together. And then you want to ask your child to move their arms and their legs together in and out. Can they do that and stay coordinated, moving them all gently and slowly together in and out? Can they move just their arms, just their legs, just their right side, just their left side? And then this is the challenging one. Can they move their right arm and their left leg, but keep their left arm and their right leg still? And then can they reverse that, moving their left arm and their right leg? It might be useful to try and build this into some kind of fun family game where you're all involved so your child doesn't feel like they're under pressure. Now this snow angels assessment absolutely isn't a complete guide to assessing problems with motor sensory integration. Specialists have equipment that can track the movements of both eyes, but you haven't got that at home. So it's a good approximation, it's a good start. And if your child has serious issues, this is likely to flag them up. And if you do find they have issues or you'd like to know more about this topic, here's a link to a video that I made with expert Charlotte Davis that goes into this in a great deal more detail. Please be reassured that problems with motor sensory integration can generally be fixed by specialists giving your child specific exercises. Charlotte Davis explains some techniques that will help you in the video I just linked to and she has a book that you can get that goes with that. And a lot of children make progress if they work on martial arts or dance or exercises that improve their coordination. Please be reassured that if your child is struggling with motor sensory integration issues, you're still going to be able to work with these videos. But you need to know that learning has been really, really hard for your child. So give them a big hug, slow down, reassure them that it's going to be OK now. Of course, there are many barriers children face to learning. And in these videos, we will work around them all. We'll use techniques that work for all children. And you as a parent are best placed to know your child and puzzle out what works for them, what doesn't work for them and what's the best time of day to work with them. I just wanted to highlight the two problems of hearing and motor sensory integration because they're so common when you work with older children with serious problems with their maths. It is such a large proportion of those children who've had these problems. Aside from physical barriers to learning, your child might also have developed mental barriers to learning. And of course, the older they are, the more likely that is. Lots of people focus on encouraging your child to have confidence, have a growth mindset. You will be able to do this. And that does work for some children, depending on the stage of development that they've reached. But it's actually counterproductive for many children. And in these videos, we're going to focus on assessing and identifying specific problems, real barriers to learning your child is facing and fixing them and the improvement in their confidence and their attitude towards learning maths and the releasing of their mental barriers will come from fixing those issues. So here are your takeaways from this video. There are three things you're gonna to do to help to fix your child's maths. First of all, give them a big hug. Give them plenty of reassurance 
that you understand that it's been really, really hard for them with their numbers. And you're going to find out how to fix that in ways that are going to work for them. Number two, tell them you don't need to do any maths for now. We're just going to check a few things like your hearing and some of your physical movements that could be a barrier to you learning maths. And number three, say that the only maths you're going to do just now is playing games with numbers in that they like. Listen to them, enter their world, see if they can come up with a game with any numbers in that they actually enjoy. If they can't come up with a game or if you've got the kind of child who will never play a game with you, don't worry about it, don't sweat it. The key here is to take the pressure off the math situation. So the game recommendation only works if it's fun. That's it. You've completed the first video of five videos on fixing your child's foundational maths. Well done. Take a break. You've earned it. But before you go, please subscribe to my channel, Rebecca the Maths Lady, and click on the bell that appears for notifications of further videos. If you've got any questions about this video, please write them in the comments to the video. And if I get a thousand subscribers, I will do live streams to take questions in real time. I hope to see you again soon when we'll get started on some work with numbers. Bye for now.